First up on New Day, a 17-year-old climate activist from Seattle is making national and international headlines. The BBC named her one of their top 100 women of 2019. On top of that, earlier this year, Jamie Margolin testified in front of Congress with fellow climate activist Greta Thunberg. Jamie joins me now. How are you? I'm good. Thank you so much for having me. Have you turned 18 yet? I have not, but I turn 18 in a few days, so I'm oh, trying okay. to think of what I want to yeah, do. Uh, I still haven't figured out what I'm actually going to do. What's on the list? Anything exciting? No, I'm just trying to think. tell us that you can disclose. <laughs> I honestly have no idea. <laughs> well, I hope it's something fun. That's one of the big ones. Yeah. Um, on top of everything else, this month you won an MTV European Music Award for activism, and your makeup look had a special <laughs> message. I think we have a photo of that. Tell me a little bit more. Yeah, so I had the cameras on me that day on the red carpet, and so I wanted to take advantage of that to actually make a difference. And so a few days before that, the Keystone pipeline leaked about 350,000 gallons of crude oil. And so I wanted to really have a look that just embodied oil um, instead of just getting all glammed up. I wanted to um, have a very clear message. So I wrote, we can't drink oil on my face. Um, and then on my arms, I wrote no pipelines and then hashtag this is zero hour, which is the name of my organization and our and our initiative um, and then I had a look on one of my eyes that made it look like I was crying oil and it was just kind of a bringing what was happening into that more that that whole MTV scene which usually yeah. doesn't talk about that there were celebrities there and so people it was an it was a way to use I guess what I was wearing in fashion to communicate a message which is a great way to use that platform that yeah. moment as you said yeah. you knew there'd be a lot of people there and cameras everywhere yeah how did you, I know you're active in some other areas as well but for climate change how did you first get passionate about this so it's interesting to talk about climate change as a passion it's not something I would consider a passion of mine I hate thinking about it and um, no one really likes thinking about it uh, so it's more of there's a ticking time bomb and it needs to be diffused and everyone else is like oh it's so cool how you're so passionate and into like ticking time bombs check out this book about ticking time bombs I found I'm sure you'd love it and it's like I don't actually like to think about that yeah. it's I see like something's about to go off so we need to diffuse it because that's just a common sense thing to do and a lot of people don't um, understand that but I guess the time that I first started to really hear about the climate crisis was um, actually I can't even remember there was no specific moment where I first heard about this it was just constantly been a reality for me mm -hmm. I mean I was born after 9-11 so not only has constant airport security always been a reality for me but so is the fact that life as we know it on this planet is coming to an end and it's humans fault specifically the fault of about 100 corporations so what can you do except take action? Why do you think that that doesn't hit other people in that same way, that this is a, this is a fact, this is an emergency? I think it's because there's been a well, I always say that the fossil fuel industry is the most well-funded criminal enterprise in the world um, because what they're doing is criminal uh, to be able to, you know, in our constitution and, you know, the Declaration of Independence says that we have the rights to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, and they're actively making it so that's not the case because how can you have life, liberty, or happiness without clean air, clean water, and a livable planet? So I, I guess that's really at the root of this. The other areas that you are active in are what? Because I know you've got you know, some different yeah. things going on and, and you also face some pushback sometimes from people who say, well, just talk about climate. Yeah, I do. So pretty much the climate crisis is in reality, if you think about it, the grand culmination of all our societal systems of oppression that have been building up for centuries. Um, I encourage everyone to go to thisiszerohour.org, my organization's mm -hmm. website, um, and because we break it down. But really, the climate crisis is a result of colonialism, patriarchy, racism, and the way our current capitalist system functions in the way of just consuming endlessly and endlessly. And we can't live like that anymore. Whether you're liberal or conservative, it doesn't matter. The science says we just can't perpetuate those systems anymore. And a lot of people get mad. They're like, why are you talking about colonialism? Why are you talking about this? Just talk about climate change. And it's like, I can't talk about climate change without getting to the roots of this. And we're only going to dig ourselves further into a hole if we don't actually pull up this issue by the roots. It's kind of like trying to um, kill a weed by snipping it at the stem versus actually you know, digging into what is actually happening. So. 
That's that's Which really what I talk about it. It's, it's so much and harder, scarier. I think for for a lot of us, um, it, I'm down with what you're yeah. what you're saying. Don't yeah. get me wrong, but I I'm always amazed that we can look at these same facts and people see such different things. Well, yeah. Um, let's talk about your testifying for Congress. Mm -hmm. You were there with Greta. Uh, what was that like? Um, it was nice because. Usually I yell, I got to say right to the politicians that I usually yeah. yell at on TV. Like, you know, the TV, they say something stupid. I'm like, oh my God. And so then it's just me yelling at the TV. But instead of yelling at the TV, I got to, um, I didn't yell. I was very civil and cordial. Um, but I instead said it to, to their faces mm -hmm. in their position, in their place of power, physically on Capitol Hill. So that had a whole new reach and impact. Could you tell whether those words made a difference? Um, it's hard to know. I think one, specifically they made a difference with the people who were antagonizing us because um, there's this one politician, I forgot his name, but he's just kind of, he's just your typical sleazebag <laughs> politician. <laughs> And you know who you are out there. And you know who you are. Um, he, he's just one of those, I like money and screw everyone kind of person. And so he was just go. he was waving these papers around like, um, we can't take climate action because China isn't doing it. So if they're not doing it, then we're not going to do it. And so I said, you know, how can you look your children in the eye and tell them, I'm sorry, I couldn't save life on Earth because they wouldn't do it. So I guess I can't. Um, and then his response was he left the room. So he just kind of That's snuck around. That's when you kind of know you've, you've yeah, maybe so made a point that somebody doesn't want to deal with. Exactly. Um, he just kind of. He just kind of excused himself, so he didn't yes. answer my question. He, he absented the room. He did. Um, so what what would you say to people who are, you know, maybe they don't know a lot about this, but they, they want to do some things individually. You've mentioned your organization. We'll definitely put that up on social media today. But what are some of the initial steps that people could take? Some of the initial steps that people can take, and I want people to start thinking outside of, like, recycle or, like, oh, mm -hmm. I bought an electric car because these are personal actions are you know they're obviously good but um but we want to do we need something systematic more change right. and if you notice you know i've seen a massive uptick in online ads and tv ads by exxon mobil shell bp all of these like massive fossil fuel corporations their ads are see how you can lower your carbon footprint today check out your carbon footprint tracker and then they're like casually dumping millions of gallons and destroying life on earth and extracting and making money and then they're like, hey, you individual, I'm going to victim blame you and make this think this is your fault. So you get all guilty about your own carbon footprint and ignore the fact that I'm literally destroying everything. So first things first that you can do is break the myths that the environmental crisis is something that is an individualistic thing. That is something that you can, that, that okay, we just need to switch some light bulbs and we'll be good. And buy electric cars, no. Um, what you need to do is actually start engaging with your community to bring about systematic change. So here in Seattle, there are a lot of amazing local climate justice organizations. We have Got Green. We have Plant for the Planet, which is actually uh, where I got started with before I even started Zero Hour. There's Zero Hour Seattle chapter that you can get involved with. There's just so much that you can do. Um, and so I don't expect you to throw your life away and then devote yourself to the cause. But just even attending like a local rally or protest or local community meeting and with the internet, it's super easy to find when, when they're meeting, mm -hmm. look them up on social media. These things are so important because you actually have to start building power and community power to combat these things. And you don't have to be an activist to do that. It's but just we can be connected. But you that can be can connected. So much. One of the things that was disturbing after you two testified was just the amazing amount of blowback online and the yeah. you know the bullying um, and far worse. What are you doing in terms of, I hope, taking care of yourself and sort of existing in that space? I mean, it's definitely very difficult because on social media, it's very clear that I never make anyone happy. I go out and do something. They're like, oh, well, technically, didn't you drive there? Or I mean, yeah, I exhale carbon dioxide too. Like, you know, like, I'll, it, like it's very easy to be super attacked, nitpicky, everything that we do. A lot of the, the other side loves to use this whole thing that nothing you say is valid because you burned a fossil fuel once, therefore shut up. Um, so uh, disputing these claims, I've just learned kind of to let them roll off my shoulders. I think a, a very healthy way for me, the way that I've been able to cope as a person is just reminding myself that 
not even engage with them. I don't engage with climate deniers on social media. I don't engage with um, hate comments or, or anything like that. Um, you know, people also love being a young woman on the internet is hard, uh, especially out it there. Is. So people yeah. will, people will also attack different. Um, different aspects of my identity. I think if I was like a straight white man, like people wouldn't do that, but people will leave very sexist remarks. I, one time there was like this Nazi Twitter storm where they found out I was Jewish, so they did all these anti-Semitic remarks. I get really homophobic remarks online because I'm also very open about that. So it's just like, about being queer, so then it's like all of these different things people will find and attack me, mm -hmm. and it's not even on the issues, because if I was, I feel like with men, people will attack them on the issues, but with women, and then when you tack on all these other identities that I have too, they'll just jab you there. And so what I do is I just tune it out, focus on what I'm doing and being productive in the world, and then also just, you know, taking time to build with the people. You know, this is not, Zero Hour is not a one-woman show. We are uh, an organization of many, many young people uh, from all over the country, all over the world. I co-founded it with um, an amazing activist named Nadia Nazar and another amazing activist named Madeline, too. So I talk to them, I connect with them, and I just kind of I don't, it's easy to get sucked into that social media vortex yeah. of, you know, people calling you slurs, people doing all sorts of things, but then you just kind of got to remind themselves that they're just, you know, they don't have a life because otherwise, why would they be attacking a teenager online? So it's like, that's sad for them. I'm going to do me. Good. I'm glad that you yeah. are. I'm sorry that happens. Yeah. It happens to young women. It happens to activists who are young women most of all. Yeah. Um, but I appreciate your courage and your truth telling and I appreciate your leadership. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Thank you for having me. Our pleasure. Up next, we're gonna turn Thanksgiving into a Planksgiving workout. We're gonna work on our core. Boy, does mine need it when we come back. <laughs>